Um, so tonight I thought we would go over a slightly unusual opening. It's been like months since anything has actually been like posted by me. We're backlogged so much, so it's hard to take viewer suggestions every time. Uh, but I'm going to show a little secret weapon that I like to use against the French defense. So after the moves e4, e6, d4, d5, so far everything's normal. Uh, we will be looking at the Tarash variation with knight to d2. Of course, there's, there's lots of other moves. You can play knight to c3, a uh, very logical way to protect your e-pawn. Um, you can push the advanced variation, or you can exchange. And Aaron, Aaron Lin is in the audience, and he agrees with that statement. So we're off to a good start. OK, but tonight we're going to look at knight to d2, which if you've never seen it before, OK, that looks a little bit strange. You put a knight in front of your bishop, in front of your queen. But it, it does have the point that uh, it eliminates any variations you might have with bishop to b4. So the winner is right out, because you would just play c3. And you might have a very aggressive intentions in the future. You might play moves like e5 and f4, and only then put one of your knights on f3, gaining lots of space on the king side, going in for an attack. And there's a couple different ways black can respond in this position. Um, perhaps the most popular is, is knight to f6. And then you'll get some closed positions like this. And your plan over the next few moves is to play c5, knight to c6, and you attack the center. So this would be a very popular way. If you prefer open positions, you might want to look at the move c5, which is going to guarantee that some of these pawns take each other and you get a nice wide open position. Nothing wrong with that. You can Danny Machuca it up and go for the, the Rubenstein variation. You can just take, um, which we saw in a game today. So we saw Wesley So play the white side of this against the Kobian. So for a Kobian's sake, we won't talk about the result. Um, so that's also possible. But there's also another way you can try to immediately take advantage of the placement of this knight. And that's with the, the strange looking, do you know it? H6. This also is a move, but we won't be looking at it today. Right, yeah, this is also a move, this is a move. Like as long as you're like waiting and not doing anything, then it's a move. So there's quite a lot of moves here. But we'll be looking at the, the fourth most popular, knight to c6. So a very unusual move. This is the Guimard variation. But uh, OK, immediately you are attacking the center. But it does look like you're, you know, you're committing a big cardinal sin here, because now how are you ever going to play c5 and attack the center? So it looks very strange. It looks a little dubious, maybe. But uh, I've actually had a lot of opponents. I was playing this in a blitz game a couple days ago, just like outside after the, uh, the championship was over. And somebody played the move e5, which he was a relatively good player too, you know. Um, but I, I just took this. And, and there's no trick here. You just win a pawn. So there's, there's just no compensation. Um, so how, how could we defend this pawn? There's, uh, there's two main ways. Perhaps the best is to do it with a piece. OK. But I find in a lot of games, especially in Blitz, people have a tendency to play the move c3. So I'd like to start here. We'll take a look at this, and then we'll go back to knight to f3. Um, OK. And so probably you've surprised your opponent on move three. And then usually you surprise them again on move four. Because I've had a lot of people who are playing quick games, but they've they thought a lot on move three, and then they think a lot here. Um, does anyone know what the most popular move is here for black? I wonder what you guys would, would do here. Just develop? OK, so this is, this is possible. Um, but it probably wouldn't surprise them. They're expecting that. And then they can follow up with e5 and f4 and put the other knight on f3 and, and get castled. Though this, this should be playable. It's just, if you play this way, you'll, you might sometimes say, why don't I, I have a pawn here on c5? But the most popular move, e5. So this is uh, it's just quite different than most you know, French defenses that you may play. Because uh, you immediately, you know, they thought, normally in the French, you just keep that on e6. You love, you love hemming in your bishop. But uh, Mike Kummer was here, so we had to liberate our bishop. It was only fair. Uh, if he wasn't here, we wouldn't be able to show this variation. I do want to show one variation, not because it's good, 
but because it has a funny name. So here, OK, the most common move is here. And you have thoughts of if they play bishop to d3, maybe you could play f5. e5 is also a strong move. Um, so most people here, they actually play this, this unusual move so they don't want to uh, leave this guy in a pin. But I want to just mention this move only because it has a very funny name. So if anyone can tell me the name of this variation, I'll give you a really big prize. Because it's not played very often. But uh, I'll give you, guys, give you guys a chance. All right. This is the Thunder Bunny variation. So OK, and it's not even necessarily very good, but it has a funny name. So you might want to play it just for that reason alone. But OK. <clears throat> All right, we'll go back and we'll look at uh, c3 here. And we'll look at the main move, e5. OK? So now there's a lot of tension in the center. So white has to decide what he's going to do here. And the most common response is to take on d5. So we'll come back to that. You might also be wondering, well, what if they take instead um, right here on e5? OK. And there's probably two moves you can consider. You'll either take on e4 or you'll take on e5. The most common is to take on e4. And already there's some, some interesting options for white. White's tried some very unusual stuff here. Uh, we got quite a big audience, so I guess what would you guys do with the white pieces here? There's, there's several possible moves. Bishop b5? Bishop b5? OK. Yeah, and this is very thematic in this sort of variation. Uh, you, play, you put your bishop here a lot more than you put it on d3 in these lines. I suppose if I have time, I'll protect this guy. And then I won't know any more theory after this, because not a lot of people play bishop to b5. But OK, it's a, it's a good move, I guess. Um, you might be wondering, well, what happens if I just take this? That might be your first thought. Um, some people are shaking their heads, though, in disagreement. But OK, in a variation like this, you just can't really be any worse here as black. Uh, they can play a move like this. f6 is the only move humans have ever played here. But there's also this possible move. Very tricky. And the point is, even if you, you double my pawns, you'll notice it's kind of hard for white to develop. So if you, if you think about this position for a little bit, it might be hard to find a, a good move here for white. So OK, if you put your, your king here, you know, you're going to run into some bishop f5. It's hard, to, it's hard to do a lot of things. I don't know how you would develop. So actually, black is not worse here. This is a, a fine way for him to play. Um, but we'll go back here. Instead, white has also tried some other creative moves, such as queen to a4. And now we'll get a variation like this that will be just very, very equal. So we'll do some stuff, and then OK, we'll trade. And all right, let's even go a few moves further. We can, we can kick this guy back. And OK, so again, when you do play this variation, you risk, you risk having really, really equal positions. But OK, you're playing black, so you equalize pretty fair. That's fine. And if you're playing the French, they can also play the exchange variation. So you're used to equal positions if you play the French enough. Um, this also is a possible move. OK, and you, you get kind of a funny position sometimes, where both queens are, are in the way on the e file. But OK, this is completely equal as well. So. Not a very uh, testing reply to e5 if they just decide, OK, they're going to they're gonna take on e5. So instead, we'll focus here a little bit on the, the main move. OK, our knight's attacked. We will take this. And white should again develop his pieces. But uh, this has actually been played quite frequently. And after you take back, your knight is going to jump into d3. So People seem to like this variation. They allow this check, and you get the, the bishops. So you have the two bishops. You're a little bit behind in uh, development here. But if you can keep white from ever castling, then you're, you're doing pretty fine. So OK, you shouldn't really have any trouble as black in this line either. But uh, OK, so that's sort of what happens when they play c3. Normally, you just get a, a either equal or, or a better position. So that's why most people prefer in this our main move here. Knight g to f3. So now, if I were running the tournament and I'm not running Monday Night Mayhem, 
If you guys thought I was crazy, just wait until we let Mike Cummer be the director of it. He's going to do all sorts of wild, crazy stuff. I would start in this position and have it be White's turn to move. But who, who knows what that crazy guy will, will decide. You'll probably just end up playing the two knights, and none of this will be relevant for, for anything. All right. But OK, we'll look at the main move here. Um, now what would you guys do as, as black? OK, so you've, you've guarded the e5 square. That's one benefit. How would you guys continue here, I guess? And, and it should be an easy one. I'm trying to warm you guys up. Take the pawn. OK, so you, if you take the pawn, which might actually be more playable than it, it first appears, uh, OK, you do have a problem that you're, you're probably never going to play e5. And normally in these lines, you do, again, want to have the move c5 possible. So instead, um, if you're not going to play the move c5, another common break is to play f6. But you would have to first encourage the pawn to go to e5. And then you'll follow it up with f6. This is the, the point of this variation. So OK, this is the most common move. And after e5, you go back. So you won't be able to play c5 in most lines. But instead, you're striving for f6. So that's how you're going to get counterplay and, and fight against the center here. Um, a lot of people in Blitz, they've just played this move, which is not a very accurate move. In most French lines, that's where you want your bishop to go, because we no longer have a knight on f6. So sometimes you take on h7 when the king's castled and you checkmate him. Um, so that's normally a good square. But here, you can just play the move knight to b4. So you're either going to get the bishop, or if he goes back, now you do have time to play c5. And OK, they can attack you, and you can go back. And you'll get a line. Um, we can even show it from, from the start here. Let's play a slightly different variation so we can compare. If we play this, this line, and OK, f4 is a move, but we'll play this variation. Normally, white would prefer to have the bishop on d3. It's a more aggressive post for the, the bishop. It's OK, it's eyeballing. The, uh, the h pawn over there, so when black castles, sometimes you can sacrifice. But uh, OK, in this variation, we saw that he would be here, which would be a much more passive move. So you can get a, a better position in this line. Let's just bloop. So we can see here, this would be an improved version. And I've had this position several times, like in Blitz. So OK, it's just a slightly better version than before. Black normally plays queen b6 pretty early, and he tries to get lots of pressure on the center. All right. So instead, we'll go here. And the main move against, you know, like when the top grandmasters play this, is knight to b3. So we'll take a look at that. But in my experience, and I've played this in many tournament games, and I've played it on the internet a lot, and I've never played, and I've never faced knight to b3 here, even though it's sort of the main move at the top level. So it is worth looking at c3, because this is what everybody seems to like to do. And your normal plan of just playing bishop to d3 is actually not the most accurate plan here for white, which is why this is a great surprise weapon. You know, they, they very often misplay this, and they misplay it early on. But OK, it's our, it's our turn. So I guess what are we going to do here? We're going to go ahead and play f6. All right. And they almost always take. And now how to take back? We have, we have three different ways. And in you know, a lot of lines in the Tarash, you, know, you just take back with your knight almost on instinct. Because OK, you're, you unblock your, your bishop. And you might be able to go somewhere in the future. But in this line, it's actually very good to take back with the queen. And at some point, you know, maybe you'll play bishop d6 and you'll castle. You're going to play the move e5 and get rid of your only weakness and liberate your light squared bishop. So if you're able to play e5, you know, if, if that's what you're planning, it's nice to have all of your pieces here. You can even have a bishop on d6 looking at it. So you're probably going to get to play e5 and get rid of your weakness. And if you can play e5 under favorable circumstances, in general, it's going to mean you're better. Um, so let's say, for example, bishop to d3 seems very common. And you might be able to play e5 right away, but OK. Let's pretend like we're good players and develop all our pieces in castle. 
Now there's uh, some things that can happen here. I, I want to point out a few mistakes that uh, black can make. Because in, in general, what your next few moves you want it to be is king h8, which is very important in, in a lot of positions, and only then e5. So, but I'll make sort of a, you know, a benign move. That's a move that uh, white might play in this position. OK, nothing, nothing wrong with that. And now, after e5, white actually has a really strong move here. So it might take you by surprise. And based off the fact that perhaps you should have had your king over here to not suffer this problem, what do you guys think white should play in this position? It's about to get very tactical. Awesome. Queen to b3. Excellent move. So OK, you're attacking the pawn. And the problem is there's not a really good way to defend it. If, for example, knight to b6, do we see another good move for white here? So this would be you know, sort of a, I could see a lot of players getting surprised when this move appears on the board. It's, it's probably not the move you would first think of. And you might think this move is impossible. But actually, the move knight to e4 is very good. Yeah, so there's, right, so the pawn is pinned. And you're guaranteed to pick up the bishop. So let's, let's make another mistake, though. Uh, which will be similar to something we're going to see. OK, and here it might not be such a mistake, but OK. If we take here, white has another tactic. Man, it, they just keep coming. Bishop takes pawn. Darn, there's only one pawn I can take. I can't make fun of you by saying some other pawn. OK. Bishop takes pawn, and OK, you'd have to play king to h8. So hopefully everybody sees what would happen on this move. Knight to g5, and you're going to lose your queen. So OK, which is also a problem in this other variation. So let's go back here. Um, we'll say this move, and we just, we're going to play e5 right away. We're going to be a little ambitious. OK. And now, if I, you know, if I see this little the trick here, OK, I'm going to unpin. You know, I'm, I'm going to unpin here. So now I'm just threatening to play here. You'd again see a, the similar tactic. Yeah, bishop takes h7. And again, so you can play here. And what's funny about this, too, is it's, it's happened in a few games, but black is won every time. So it's also hard to play white in this position. It's not, <laughs> even though you're down a pawn and the computer's like, yeah, this is great for white, it's, it is hard to play as a human because you know, you're going to play here, and then you're going to take this thing, and then you're going to win. So that happens a lot. But, but yeah, you should be able to just go back, and, and everything's fine. <clears throat> uh, but OK, it's hard. it's hard for both sides to play that position. Um, all right, and so that's just sort of a general overview. We'll go now to a game, assuming I can find it. Let's see if I can, I can even find it. Um, this is the game between Alexander Straponsky and Hikaru Nakamura from the 2012 US Championship. So OK, we see Hikaru is, again, the, the highest rated player in the championship this year. By the time this, you see this, you'll have known if he won or not. Maybe Caruana won. Maybe So won. Maybe Akshat Chandra won. That'd be something. Um, but so we'll know who's who's going to win. But he's in this again, and so here he was playing with the black pieces, and okay, we'll see. He got the French defense, and after after this move, he played the Guimard. Okay, so he attacked the pawn, and his opponent, you know, very very good grandmaster, he decided to play the following variation with knight to b3, and this move is a this game is like 71 moves long. So we'll go through it a little bit faster than usual. Um, OK, knight to b3. And a very common move that black wants to play in this position is uh, something you might not think of, but a5. Getting a little bit more space, you'll play a4 if, if they let you. And also, you want to play moves like b6 and bishop to a6 to trade off the bishops, because this bishop will at some point go to d3, and that'll be one of white's strongest pieces. Because again, with the pawn on e5, you don't have a knight on f6. So there might be sacrificial ideas. So trading off these light squared bishops, especially when this guy is stuck behind all these pawns, is a very good idea. 
So his opponent didn't let him play a4. He played a4 himself. OK. And now the most common move is b6. So that's what you could maybe expect. But OK, he probably had this prepared. And he decided to go for this line with bishop to e7. OK. And now white played bishop to b5. So now playing b6 is not a very good move. So uh, some people seem to get it, but I guess, I guess for others, you know, that, would, that would be bad. Um, so OK, he's fighting against black's plan. Very good. And now you, know, you might think, oh, maybe he's just going to castle. But he actually went after the bishop. He played knight to a7. OK, so I would, I would like to take your bishop if you'd let me. So the bishop went back. Um, it's worth noting maybe, maybe some greedy people want to take this. It does just feel, it feels kind of wrong. You're falling behind in development. And actually, now black would have a tactic. So let's see, what would have happened if he, if he took this pawn? Yeah. I took Knight takes bishop? Yep. All right, I'll take back. All right, I'll go back. And then you want to trade these guys. And then I'm up a pawn, but my knight is a little silly. No, OK. That's not the most testing move. You actually have a, an even better tactic, but that was a good, a good idea. Push the pawn up. Push the pawn up. Man, so many pawns I can push. push bishop pawn. Bishop pawn. OK, excellent. And you attack two pieces. OK, so that would be the tactic that would win. So. All right, that move is impossible. So after knight to a7, he just backed up his bishop. He went to d3. And now we saw b6. OK, we're thinking what's, what's kind of nice is, OK, now we will get to play a move like c5. We'll put our knight back on c6, maybe. We'll play bishop a6. You know, we'll trade those guys off. It's very easy to, to play black here. And now a very interesting move. So his opponent, he sees that idea. He knows c5 is about to come. So he plays a very interesting move. He plays bishop to d2. And the point is, after a move like c5, and after he takes, this is what actually happened, uh, he's preventing you from taking with the pawn, which is desirable, because then you might be able to push this pawn and cause a lot of problems for white. But obviously, this guy would be hanging. So both captures are actually relatively fine here. Um, OK, so either way you would capture would actually just win a pawn. So he wasn't able to take back that way, but OK, he said, fine. Uh, I'll just take back with a knight. And now, if you don't take me, I'll take your bishop. Or I'll take the, the knight on b3. So OK, white took this. And now he get, did get to take back with the pawn. And it is sort of important. It's nice that he controls the d4 square. So this has sort of been an opening success for black, at least in my opinion. He has some open lines on the queen side. Uh, white. You know, doesn't have a, a big attack coming just yet. And OK, he might get to get his plan of, of trading off these bishops in the near future. He's going to move this guy, and then he's going to get to play bishop to a6. Um, he decided first, um, after the move b3, preventing c4, which is also an annoying move. He castled. And now, OK, he's doing everything he can to sort of fight against the, the future idea. Knight to c6. The bishop went back in. And uh, OK, we do intend to, at some point, play this move. So queen to b6 makes a lot of sense. And now on your next move, you can go try to trade the bishops. So this, is, this has been pretty good for, for him so far. So castles, bishop a6. OK, he's done all of the plans that he wanted to do. And OK, we're out of the opening. And, and now we're going to see the middle game. And white made sort of an interesting decision here. I don't know how many people would have considered playing this move. But he played c4, which, OK, kind of traps the bishop in a little bit. Um, so the bishop is, is trapped in for the moment. Also, at just the right moment, we might be able to play a move like d4. Um, and this might actually be playable, even though there is a way for black to win a pawn here. He could take this and take here. And OK, Hikaru probably didn't want to give away his pawn, but maybe he has some compensation here, because OK, we, we have some pressure. On this file, we have a passed pawn. But OK, 
you know, not, not blundering your pawns is also a good strategy in chess. So he instead played bishop to b7. OK. Um, so the rook came over. In some lines, you know, you might want to have your, your rook here. We'll see why in just a, just a minute. You might want to keep your rook on a1. Um, OK, his knight jumped in. And so he's moved his pieces away to try to show that this guy is a little bit off sides. Maybe if I can just play this move too. Um, if I, I'll, I won't be able to use all of these squares ever, but OK, you might be a little trapped over there. And uh, again, sort of a, another interesting decision. Knight to g5. OK, and white you know, might be thinking of a, an attack here. So he has the potential for queen to h5. He has the potential for f4, f5. He has the potential to take the knight and then, sorry, take the knight and then swing the, the rook over somewhere. So there's a lot of attacking ideas here for white. Um, all right, so Carlos, first of all, said, you know, go away. And uh, you could just go back to f3. But uh, OK, he went back to h3. And this is, this is the famous maneuver from Schrantz Machuca, 2016, where I did the same thing, only unlike the game, I did this, and it was really strong in my game. So perhaps he had seen that, even though it was played four, game, four years before. But, uh, but I guess he knew. Um, so he did that, but he didn't follow it up the same way I did, because it's a different position. OK. Instead, now we got the move d5, or d4, excuse me. So OK, we've. We've improved this bishop. Now he has a lot of scope. We got the passed pawn. Things are looking pretty good. And uh, OK, knight to f4. And now um, one thing is, OK, you can go here to contest the knight, which is actually going to happen in the game. And you also might be thinking of knight to h5. So let me pass a couple times. Let's just get this guy here. So here, just to demonstrate the threat, you know, we wasted time with black. Um, all right, this is actually a quite a dangerous position. So there's all these sacrifices. You can take this and this, and the queen's coming in. So the best move here is, OK, you can take on h6. <laughs> that guy's in the lead of the tournament, so I guess he knows everything about the opening. He's like, I know it all. Yep, I got it. OK. And we come in, and then we threaten checkmate. If you don't want to get made, you know you can go here, but this is this is just terrible. So there's all these sacrificial ideas that you you got to be aware of with the knight here. So he decided, okay, these guys may become targets in the future, and uh, he put his king on h7. And this game was really memorable because Hikaru, you know, he set up his pieces in a really interesting way in this game. So we'll see it. Um, okay, White just gets his his other rook into the game. And now uh, an unusual move, rook to g8. Um, so he has some, some defensive ideas. We'll get to it. So after the knight went back, you're going to like this move too. The other rook went to f8. All right, so just, yeah, so what could, this, what could this all be about? We're going to see in just a second. All right, so the knight took. And here's why this, this rook may want to still be on a1, because in any variation where this occurs, you, know, you might want to be able to push this pawn down the board. But OK, this, is, this should be fine for white. Um, OK, check. And you're, you're probably thinking, OK, he could move his king, or he could block with his pawn. That's what he decided to do. And uh, OK, white played here. Maybe not the best move, but OK, you got big control here over e5. All right, that's, that's good. But uh, OK, since if black doesn't get checkmated, then he's, he's doing all right in this position. And uh, OK, so it's, and then a lot of interesting stuff happened. We'll just get to the main action here. g5. And uh, I guess I would like to ask the audience, in starting next month, we're going to have on Tuesdays at 6.30, we'll have strategy sessions with Jonathan Schrantz. And in that class, maybe we'll do a lot of positions like this, where uh, I'll give you a position and I'll ask, um, what, how would you rearrange your pieces here with black? So it's at this moment that I kind of want to take a second and see, uh, do a little planning exercise. If you guys are playing black, where do you think the optimal square for all of your pieces is? 
And whenever I say that to kids, they say crazy stuff like, oh, I want my rook over here and a, a queen here <laughs> and like pawns here. Or, like I want rooks here and here, checkmate, you know. But OK, within reason, um, just take a minute and see how would you guys set up your pieces here with black? Because what he did is very, very interesting. So the only piece that's really well placed is this bishop. Now he's going to move all of his other pieces around. He's going to move his rooks and his king and his bishop and his queen, um, this other bishop, I mean. And they're all going to find better squares. So OK. Where, uh, where would you guys put this? Maybe this is the easiest? I don't know. Where would you guys put this bishop? C7. Yeah, C7, right? So, OK, C7, that'd be a good square. You got, you got pressure on the pawn. OK. Um, the queen, what should we do with her? And there's probably a couple different reasonable squares that you could put your, your queen on. So she's not, not really doing anything on this diagonal or file here. Where would she be better? Well, if you're going to put your bishop on c7, um, we'll imagine the bishop is on c7. Well, you could put your, your queen over here, you know, line them up. You could also put the queen over here, get some, some pressure on the g-pawn. OK, so that'd be an improvement. And what about this guy? Where do you think that guy's going to go? You could, you could stay there. But uh, E7. yeah, that's yeah, very close. Yeah, e7 was suggested. And yeah, this, <coughs> this guy's going to go this way. You know, he's going to start running that way, which means he needs to rearrange his, his rooks slightly. So we're going to see all of that. Um, OK, so he gets out of the way so he can play rook to g6, which he plays, which, OK, defends the pawn. And anytime, uh, sometimes you want to be defending your other pawn too. OK, there's going to be variations where that is important. So OK, now the king is, has an escape. He's going to run to the queen side. Very interesting. Um, OK, so that's where the, we know where the queen's going. And so he just he rearranges all of his pieces. It's a very, very nice maneuvering game. And OK, his opponent said, all right, Nakamura's running his, his king over to the queen side. He's pretty good. I'll do the same thing. All right, so both kings castle king side, and now they're going to run over to the other side. OK, so that, that all happened. The bishop came in. All right, and he decided to put his queen on this square. Makes, makes some sense. Um, OK, so there's been, been some shuffling. <laughs> and yeah, so very, very interesting maneuvering game. And now another good move was played, f5. So exploiting the fact that there's a pin, so this would, this would be a mistake that even the person walking in the door can see. Do you see what black would play here? If I if I put my mouse here, then do you see it? Oh, okay. <laughs> All right, excellent. Yeah, so f5. Okay, another good move. And maybe he's going to play f4 himself. And okay, this it seems like all of a sudden black's pieces really untangled, and they're they're looking a lot better than white's pieces. This guy is still sort of trapped over here. The queen is trapped over here. This guy is about to be locked out. So all right, black has managed to just improve his pieces slowly. And slowly, he's outplaying his, uh, his grandmaster opponent. So OK, bishop h2. He's you know, getting ready to get off of this diagonal because he knows it's going to get blocked. So he was ready for that. And now another, another good move. OK, it's a queen move. Queen b8, queen b8 does make, uh, make a lot of sense. I wonder why, why it wasn't played. I mean, I suppose I just defend. And then it's, well, it's, it's not even that hard to attack it again, really. But, OK. Do you want to take the e-file with the king in the center? 
Right, yeah, and I might not even take it right away, right? I'm gonna, I'll go over here. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and, then, and then I'll take it. Um, yeah. Okay, so, but anyway, he instead decided on queen f8, also a very good square, with the same sort of idea. You know, maybe he gets to play queen f5 and put some pressure on the pawn here. Okay. And here white made an made a interesting and brave decision. He decided to sacrifice. So he took the pun. Okay, and then he gets to take back. All right, so we're we're looking good so far. So we have to, you know, move our bishop back. So you got two pawns for your piece. Your rook is decent on that diagonal. All very good. Uh, and you do have two passed pawns. So is this enough for white? That's the the big question. Um, it's certainly the dynamic way to play. And okay, but you know, white's now going to get some some pretty good pieces. His queen is still off sides, but okay. So after this move, he's now he gets to also liberate his bishop. This is another point. So he might be able to go to c4, where he has some pressure here. And he might be able to go to d3, because you'll notice it's not very easy to get this rook out of the way. Because if this you know, moves here, say, then we might be able to take your h pawn. So maybe we can't. But OK. But in any case, he decided to play here. And uh, this move immediately is actually a big mistake. Because you have this, this counterattacking move. Where, so even if you take this, um, this is really good for black. So, uh, OK. It said rook to d6, sacrificing even more. So he took. And OK, you probably don't want to take this way, giving my, my queen some access into the king side, but OK. All right. And uh, let's see, so for the moment, it's a, it's a rook that you're down here. Um, obviously, you still have your, your past pawns. You're up, up some pawns. And uh, you're going to get a little bit of material back. OK, so you're going to win some material. Uh, he improved his bishop. And then there was some trades. OK, so this is the position we've reached. So black is up a bishop. But again, you still have these pawns. So that is, that is a lot of counterplay. And Again, I guess I know I've had students that really have difficulty finding a good plan in these endgame situations. Um, so I guess if I would just like to know what you guys would do here with white. It's white to move. So what, what do you think his plan is? And then we'll figure out what black's plan might be as well. To take over the C file, would, would you start by moving your king? Is this, is this what you? Mm hmm Mm -hmm. And then you just want to come and get the, the C file? Yep. Let's see. So even if you were there, yeah, I guess I mean, I'd mean i put my rook over here. And then I don't know how you're ever going to enter. But OK, he, did, he had the idea of going after this weakness, which in a lot of end games, that's one of the things that you want to look for. You want to say, what's weak? And then can I just go attack it? Um, so this. Yeah, so this is the target that he was looking at. He decides, all right, I'm going to go get that pawn. There's probably other plans. You know, taking the C file also seems to make a lot of sense. And you might even end up doing something similar where you have some pressure here. Um, all right, and maybe for black, you're thinking, OK, maybe I can attack here. OK, that probably is easy to defend. Maybe I can attack this guy. There's some weaknesses there. If I, It's going to be hard to imagine my rook you know, breaking in because you're going to probably control the file before me. But uh, OK, then the, the g-pawn might also be a target in the future. So he brought his rook in. He's just, he's just going here. And after this move, all right, rook to d4. And now he decided just to, just to move his king up. OK, so I, mean, I think, yeah, the obvious move that I think we all would we all might play just immediately, right? You just take the pawn. Uh, and then after the rook takes, what he was probably worried about is a position like this, where his pieces end up getting really active. So rook to b8 must be what he was afraid of. And after a move like this, if uh, the rook comes over, you're sort of paralyzed as black. 
It's not very easy to move your pieces. You know, you can get this guy back into the game, but it's going to cost you a pawn. <clears throat> and okay, white suddenly has some activity, and your, your pieces don't make a whole lot of sense. So he decided instead, I'm going to prefer the activity of my pieces over you know, trying to win a little bit of material, keep the material a little bit more equal. So he gave up yet another pawn. OK. So white, is up, white has three pawns for the bishop, which seems fair enough. And, and look at this, three passed pawns. OK, very, very interesting. Uh, that should probably give white enough counterplay. But uh, OK, let's see. He's probably, but now he gets to stop this threat. So he brings his rook back. And at least now his, his pieces make a lot of sense. So that was a big goal. Um, OK, he brought his king in. And OK, is he going here? Is he going to go take this pawn? Well, after white started moving his pawns, he decided to switch his plans. And uh, OK, he's, he's going to play g4. OK, let's stop this guy. And it's also funny. Because now this guy is kind of trapped. <coughs> he kind of found a way to trap all of his pieces, <laughs> sort of self-trap everything. Um, and he's done it again. That seems, if, if you want to play like Strapunsky, that's what you do. You've got to self-trap all your pieces. Uh, that's, how you, that's how you make it in the US championship. OK, so this happened. And we got some trades. Um, OK, maybe we would take this pawn. All right, now we have a passed pawn. So OK. He brought his bishop back, and now black has a passed pawn. All right. So he pushes. All right, and white goes to stop the pawn. Rook f8, excellent. OK, he blockades. <laughs> Just be, it attacks. It, it does attack something once. It does. Yeah, it does attack something once though. Okay. Yeah. Okay, but how about this? Maybe I'm gonna check you. You know. So he took. And this is actually the decisive mistake. So he just keeps sacking, <laughs> and uh, this was one too many. So this move is actually a mistake. But if you look at this position, all right, we'll give white a move here. Uh, that's five past pawns. So, and I remember watching this live too. I didn't know, I didn't really know what was going on. You know, it seems kind of crazy. And there's actually only one winning move here. So this also is a, a good end game test for you. This is a very tricky position. Um, <laughs> that's a lot of past pawns. But black is winning. So who can, can anybody play the right move here? Rook h2. Rook h2. Yeah, that's my time. Um, Rook a2. Right, I guess I'll get this guy going. <laughs> yeah. I got a lot of pawns. I'll, I'm, pushing, I'm gonna push them all. Mm -hmm. OK. So rook b8. All right. That was played. I was trying to trick you, so good job. <laughs> you know, and it's, it's sort of like, you know, you just please, you know, you want to push your a pawn? He's like, you just, just do it. But he didn't do it. Uh, if you push here. We okay. We gotta we gotta defend this, and you're just in time with your king. So if we go here, you know, if you start pushing, yeah, we're just in time. So either way, either way you push, you know, we're we're in time. So you're just in time. Very well calculated. Um, so wow, yeah, wow. Um, so he tried instead g5. Okay, and now it's. He goes and vacuums up the pawns. OK, he gets back. And uh, OK, the king is, is in time to eat all these pawns here. 
So, and in this position, White resigned. So, yeah, there was a lot of incredible stuff he did. You know, he maneuvered his pieces around in a really instructive way. And even that end game was really tough. It's not often that your opponent has five passed pawns and they're losing. But, all right, that was the case here. So sometimes a rook is better than five pawns. Um, OK, so hopefully this gave you guys you know, a little, little weapon. You can use it. It's really good in blitz. And it's even good over the board. It's good enough to play it in the US championship. And uh, OK, keep sending in your submissions. Make sure you hit like, share, subscribe. And uh, we'll see you guys next week.